On your mark, get set, go. In his element, Emmett is like most five-year-old boys. Running, jumping, laughing, screaming, talking, nonstop. And he likes normal five-year-old stuff. Cars and trucks. He says he wants to be Spider-Man when he grows up because he loves protecting people. But spend time in the Sandberg home in Blaine and see one stark difference between Emmett and other kids his age. It's not a choice. Yeah, it's just a debilitating anxiety where he, he's afraid to talk. I mean, it's, it's a social anxiety where in a social situation, he, he just can't talk. Yeah, it's a real fear of having people hear his voice. He will go kicking and screaming and do everything he can to avoid having to talk in front of other people other than his immediate family. Samantha and Darren Sandberg noticed early signs of anxiety in Emmett, but this year a kindergarten evaluation revealed a new diagnosis called selective mutism. What is that? <laughs> yeah, didn't know, never heard of it before and didn't know what it was. So we start, you know, reading online different books. A child with selective mutism speaks normally at home, but is unable to speak in other social settings. So on this day, meeting us as strangers with cameras. Which is your favorite, Lightning McQueen or Mater? Emmett will only answer or speak with a whisper in his parents' ear. Lightning McQueen. Lightning McQueen's your favorite? Good yeah. job. Good job. Awesome. Good brave talking. So he'll try to do it in our ears first, and we try to encourage him to whisper to the front of our faces. And oftentimes he'll cup his hands over his mouth so that you can't see his mouth when he's talking. And Emmett faces more complication, considering the sister who is always by his side. Oh, well, he's one minute older. In contrast, Ellie is outgoing, extroverted, and as you can see here, often speaks for her brother. And he doesn't have a wiggly tooth. I think that has been part of his coping mechanism. A boy scared speechless brings big fears for mom and dad too. In school, you know, how's he going to act, interact with the teachers or kids are going to bully him because he's different. And as a parent, those, those are scary things. The lack of awareness and lack of options for treatment for it, that's been really difficult. The Sandbergs could only find one therapist in Minnesota who specializes in selective mutism, part of why they are speaking for their son. <laughs> they want to help other families find understanding in the silence and in the children lost for words. There's progress, so there's definitely hope that we'll keep that progress going. <laughs>